Welcome to the End Time Sanctuary Present Truth Ministries. This time we are going to discuss the Christian problems that is assurance of salvation. Many of us have served Christ wholeheartedly. Many of us have fulfilled our role as a follower of Christ. And yet, there is always a longing for assurance of salvation. In fact, this problem of salvation is back-to-back -back Christian problem. Because either the assurance is genuine or the assurance is false. Many Christians who sincerely believe in Jesus do not have confident assurance of present salvation. Assurance of salvation means the inward witness of the Holy Spirit that one has the present salvation in Christ. The Bible says that many who believe that they are saved will find out in the judgment that they are lost. Therefore, Paul says, examine yourself whether you are in faith. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. The question, did you bother to examine it? How many times did you examine that you have the assurance of salvation? What is your honest evaluation? Do you have the assurance? Because there are people who believe saved, but they are not in the end. These are people who believe that they are walking in the light of truth, but in reality, walk in darkness. Jesus warned, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Look that. Jesus warned, take heed or be careful. That the light that what you think is light is not darkness. Because, she said, he said, If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And millions of people have this idea. They think that they are really walking in the light, but actually it is darkness. So the classic example are the Pharisees and the scribe. So Jesus declared, How can you escape condemnation of hell? Matthew 23, 33. You know, they are really the Pharisee and scribe, so religious. Even to the minutest details of the requirements of being a Pharisee, they have fulfilled that. But it is also possible to be saved without being sure of it. According to Paul in Romans 2, 11 to 16, For there is no partiality with God, for as many have sinned without the law, will also perish without the law. That is the Gentiles. And as many as have sinned in the law, will be judged by the law. That is the Jews. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when the Gentiles, who do not have the law by nature, do things the law, this, though not having the law, are law to themselves. Meaning to say, there was a reversal. Who show the work of the law written in their hearts and their conscience also bearing witness between themselves and their thoughts, accusing else, excusing them, in the day when God will judge secret men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Meaning to say, the Gentile did not think that they will be saved, but they are doing the right things. But the Jew who has the law failed to do it. So, two sides. Some people feel they are saved. But in the end, they are lost. So, it is possible to have false assurance. Because they fail only. 
When actually is not saved, as Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demon in your name, have done wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. So, a feeling of being saved is not a surety of our assurance. Genuine Christians must have an assurance. Because the genuine biblical assurance is essential to normal Christian life. Jesus said, Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 20. How can you rejoice that your name is in heaven if you don't know? What is the basis of your assurance? According to John, 1 John 5, 11 and 12. And this is the testimony. That God has given eternal life and this life in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. That's a clear assurance. And so, we need to have assurance in our own selves. There are essentials in assurance. One is that is called new birth. Which include forgiveness of sin, cleansing of sin, the new heart. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Most I surely I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3 verse 3, and Nicodemus, you know, he was the rabbi of Israel. He was a learned man. He was the ruler of the Jews. He was a Pharisee, a man of talent, opposition, rich and influence, but he was not a spiritual person. He does have done all the rituals required by his religion, but yet Jesus said to, to him, you are fulfilling all these requirements, but actually you are not born from on high. So there's nothing in him that responds to his spiritual things. Ellen White says there is no safety for one who has merely a legal religion, a form of godliness. The Christian life is not modification or improvement of an old, but transformation of nature. There is death to self and sin, a new life altogether. This change can be brought about only by effectual working of the Holy Spirit. Desire of Ages 172. So here is the essential. We must be born again. Sad to say that many Christians, when Jesus comes, since they are not born again, they will be burned again. And that's very dangerous. There are two elements of new birth, total forgiveness and cleansing. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. And so this element of new birth is the starting point that we have the foundation of our assurance. In fact, Psalm 51 reads, have mercy upon me, O God. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew the steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So there is forgiveness. There is cleansing. There is renewal of empowerment within of the Holy Spirit. So, forgiven, cleans, and new heart. Ezekiel in the Old Testament says that God promised, I will cleanse you from all your filthiness, from all your idols. I will give you a new heart, and I put a new spirit within you. 
I will take a heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 25 and 26. When we have a new heart and a new spirit, then our relationship to God being restored. This text, we could read many more that the new birth is both forgiveness and new creation, a new heart, orientation, and outlook in life. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.14 Ellen White agrees. God's forgiveness is not merely a judicial act by which he sets free the condemnation. It is not only forgiveness of sin, but reclaiming from sin. It is the outflow of redeeming love that transforms the heart. Mount of Blessing 114. And so there are essential steps in assurance. So we need to be clear, my brother and sister. First step, new birth. Forgiveness, cleansing, new heart. Jesus says, John 15, 3, You are clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Step number two, abiding in Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. John 15, 4. So, first step is a new birth. Second is abiding in Christ. Third, doing the will of the Father. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the fa my Father in heaven. Matthew 7, 21. Then we have also the fourth step, the external evidence of salvation. What are the external evidence? Oh, our external evidence is that how we relate to others. Because people can see whether we have undergone no birth. But there are people who say, so oh, God is responsible. Anyway, I'm the elect. There is the so-called election or predestination. Even there are Adventists, but they entertain that idea. I have that when I was a uh, young Adventist. Ah, in Bisaya, bahala ng ginoo. Bahala ng Panginoon sa akin. Election. There's predestination. But Paul is saying, he said, Knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also power in the Holy Spirit in as much as assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. First Thessalonians 1, 4, and 5. In fact, he continued in his letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy 1.9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he has given to us in Jesus Christ before the time began. And the last one is that, just as he chose in us, in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Many people say, oh, this text is telling us that we are predestined. So, predestination, that's also an assurance. But how sure is that assurance? See, for example, about the idea of one save, always save. Because some people read our text that we have read, in a viewpoint of predestination which teaches that God decided before creation who would be saved and who would be lost. The elect cannot be lost, and the non-elect can never be saved. However, most knowledgeable proponents of this theology admit 
that it is possible for individual to think that they are among the elect, in fact, they are not. If they eventually fall away, it shows that they were not truly saved because the saved cannot fall away. Therefore, one cannot infallibly know that one who was once saved, always saved. So, the supposed guarantee is not guarantee, but only opinion about the degree of probability. In fact, I've been pastor for many years. And this is what I heard from a lot of church members. They said, Pastor, we should not think that we are saved. Because Ellen White says that. So, we have been taught by many pastors, professors, and well-meaning but misguided teachers and professors that we should never claim assurance of salvation for Ellen White state, those who accept the Savior, however sincere their conversion, should never be taught to say or to feel that they are saved. Christ Object Lesson 155. That's the main reason many do not talk inside the church. How sure are we? What to do with this straightforward warning? The problem is that many who read from Ellen White read only on this particular line. The problem is the context because on the same page, the same reference, it also declares the assurance we can. Ellen White says, Give yourself to Christ and know that he accepts us. Meaning to say, Ellen White did not. But the background of that, if you read the idea of the background, Ellen White was discussing about those persons who discuss one saved, always saved. But our assurance is important. So, in a genuine perspective, God guarantees that the repentant sinners will always be welcome home. The one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. John 6.37 One said, it is possible to fall from grace, but it is not necessary. For he is able to keep you from falling to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. That's really an assurance. When we love Christ with all our heart, when we serve him, he is the one and only one Lord in our life. Here is a promise. He is able to keep you from falling. In fact, it says in Romans 5.10, For if... We are enemies, we were reconciled to God through his death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That is an assurance. Therefore, he is able to save to the utmost perfectly and permanently those who come to God through him since he ever lives to make an intercession for them. Hebrews 7.25 This is an assurance. The problem is that many of us are looking assurance from the wrong place, not in the Bible, not from God, but our own personal resources. And so, we need to understand, Ellen White is saying the guarantee of our salvation is not based on doctrine of predestination, but on the permanent love of the one who identifies himself with us completely with us, died in our place, he lives to make intercession for us. So, so ready, so eager is the Savior hearts to welcome the members of the family of God that in the very first word we use in approaching God, he places assurance of our divine relationship, our Father. Here is the announcement that God's love us as he loves the Son. Mount of Blessing 103, 104. Meaning to say, when we see our Father, to Ellen White, that is a divine relationship, an assurance that we belong to God. We belong to the Father. So we need to understand. We let us look at our assurance in the Word of God. Because man look at on the outward appearance, but look, God looks at the heart. If God... It says here that if God creates in me a clean heart, 
then my outward appearance may not yet be changed, but God looking my new heart sees that I am a new creation. He declares me righteous. Not contrary to the fact, but because in Christ, my heart has been made righteous. And so, the psalmist say, Create in me a clean heart, O God, renewed a steadfast spirit within me. Note, Ellen White says, Thousands of Christians, including some Adventists, depend on their obedience to the law of God to commend them to his favor. When they are bidden to look to Jesus and believe that he saves them solely through his grace, they exclaim, how can these things be? Why? Because we follow what? The idea that our obedience can commend a favor to our God. Partial faith, nominal faith, intellectual faith does not qualify. Man look at the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. That's in 1 Samuel 16, 7. So we need really, our outward appearance is here. But yet we don't depend on our obedience to the law. We depend on the grace, on the mercy of Jesus Christ. Our obedience, his obedience is our obedience. His perfect life is our perfect life. When we come, when we identify, when we claim that big claim, our Father. And so, we need to change into a saving faith. Living faith and genuine faith are conquering faith. Ellen White says in the Cyro of Ages 347, the only faith that will benefit us in that which embraces him as a personal savior which appropriates his marriage to ourselves many hold faith as opinion saving faith is transaction by which those who receive in christ join themselves in the covenant relation with god genuine faith is life and living faith means increase of vigor confident trust by which soul becomes conquering power. We need, my brothers and sisters, living faith, genuine faith, saving faith, active faith. How can we have that? Because when we have this kind of faith, we are assured. But the problem is that many of us don't talk faith. We reserve it. Ellen White says, talk faith, live faith, walk by faith, and then your faith increase. And then you have that assurance. The book of Hebrews is telling us, a long verses, but allow me to read. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold past the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. This is assurance. We need also an internal evidence of our salvation. This is now the practical way. For God is not unjust to forget our work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and to do minister, and we have desired that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Hebrews 6 verses 10 and 11. So the people of God need to meet this biblical foundation of assurance. More than the assurance of salvation that comes as a fruit of accepting the living voice of God through the scripture. When we have an assurance because God sees the fruits that bears in a Christian life. Jesus says, 
I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bear fruit, he prunes, and it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, I in him, bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. John 15, 1 to 5. Meaning to say, the bearing of the fruits of holiness, of righteousness, is found in our close relationship with Christ and Jesus to his God, to his Father, because only when we attach to him, we can bear the fruits. Any branches that has no fruit has no meaning. There are also indicators of assurance, the fruit of the Spirit. That's why I always say that the indication that you have the assurance is that you have the fruit of the Spirit. What are those fruits of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. If we live in spirit, let us also walk in spirit. Galatians 5, 22, 25. Meaning to say, the greatest evidence, external evidence, that we have the assurance of salvation because we have the joy. We have peace, long-suffering, kindness. These are positive character and attitude, the character of Jesus Christ. So we don't need to live murmuring, complaining, backbiting, and all this one. These are not fruits of the spirits. These are fruits of the flesh and ungodliness. When we have such fruit that is negative, that is not indication that we have the assurance. Paul says in Colossians 3, verses 1 to 4, If you then were raised with Christ, seek things that are above. Where is Christ is? Sitting at the right hand of God. Sit your mind on things above, not on things on earth. For he died and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then he also will appear with him in glory. This is the things. The problem is that many of us are called geocentric. Geo means earth. Paul is saying here, do not sit your mind on things on earth, geocentric. But he says, sit your mind above. That's heavenly center. We need to change worldview so that we may have to do it. The problem is that the earth is so close to us. The world is so close to us. That's why the focus is on the world rather on the things that is in above. A new man. We know that we have an assurance because we knew that we are a new man and woman in Christ. Paul says, let me read on the last part. Verses 10 of Colossians chapter 3. And have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. The miracle of all miracles is that when a notorious person and sinner has been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, he becomes a new man. This is an evidence that the assurance is clear in us. And our assurance, we need to build it day by day. According to a lot of texts, 1 John, uh, John 5, verses 4 and 5, Philippians 4, 13, Colossians 2, 6 says, Assurance is maintained by faith through daily continual union with Christ. Ellen White has to say, in Ministry of Healing 182, 
Nothing is apparently more helpless yet more invincible than the soul that feels nothingness and relies wholly on the merits of the Savior by prayer, by study of His Word, by faith in His abiding presence, the weakest of human beings may live in contact with the living Christ and He will hold them by a hand that will never go, let go. That's an assurance. So let us continue our faith building day by day. That's what we need. Above all, our assurance, the Lord Jesus. For our assurance, we must know more the Bible and its promises. We must know the author and the center of the scripture, Jesus Christ himself. How is this possible? Apostle Peter writes, Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. And are filled with expressible, glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. 1 Peter 1 verses 8 and 9. Peter says that Christians have come to love Jesus, experience joy of a present salvation. This is a spiritual joy that leaves no room for doubt that we don't have any assurance. Also, it is comforting assurance in the investigative judgment that Jesus, the author of salvation and the finisher of saving faith, and for our salvation, according to the scripture, has a multiple roles to play in securing man's salvation. I will discuss that in one of the episodes. The multiple role of Jesus in the investigative judgment, that is our assurance. But for the meantime, let's see that his multiple function as a single individual in the judgment is strange to our legal system. But it's entirely keeping with biblical concept of administering justice. In Israel, in the city gates, elder could convene judicial proceeding, argue as an advocate, give a testimony, render verdict, in the sanctuary priest, not only all of this, but also bore the penalty of sin. Our assurance is this. The union of divine power and human faith and obedience is equal to omnipotent. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, the key really to assurance is obedience. You know already the entire history of Israel. When Israel are not obedient, they are really powerless against their enemy. But once they obey and follow the Lord, we know that there is really an omnipotent power. For example, when they talk Jericho, Jericho has... City has been walled, two walled, 35 by 30 feet high, double walled. That's incredible. No human really can penetrate. But God says, just obey. Turn around seven times. What kind of war is that? Faith and obedience. Because Ellen White says, the armies of heaven came down with Jesus Christ and they pushed. The massive rocks into the ground, but Israel have done their part. Human faith and obedience. That's where can you find where war just blowing trumpet and encircle the city? We call that one. God does the fight because war belongs to the Lord and God's people have their own part and their part was faith and obedience. And so Ellen White says, the secret of success is the union of divine power and human effort. And we find that a lot of history in the Old Testament of God's people. That is Patrick and Prophets 509. She said also in Christ's Object Lesson 333, 
as the will of man cooperates with the will of God, it becomes omnipotent. This incredible statement. Our cooperation means faith and obedience to the will of God. It becomes omnipotent. Whatever is to be done at his command may be accomplished by his strength. And this is our response. How do we know that we have an assurance? I love these two particular texts. God's deposit or guarantee of our assurance. According to Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14, In him you also trusted. After you hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you also believe. You were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, who is a guarantee of our inheritance until redemption of the purchased position to the praise of His glory. Meaning to say, Jesus has put a lot, enough, more than enough, money in the bank as a guarantee because we trusted, we believed, and we obey, and the guarantee is the Holy Spirit that surely He will have our own, the trust we have, He will take us. For all the promises of God in Him are yes, in Him, amen to the glory of God. Now, he who is established with you in Christ has anointed us and also he has sealed us. He has given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee or a deposit. My brothers and sisters, this is an assurance. That the Holy Spirit, that's why we discussed it earlier, the fruits of the spirit is an indication an external evidence that God has deposited in us, in our hearts, that there is a deposit and a guarantee that we are assured of salvation. In the end, I want to end this one with two particular texts that I want to read. To have an assurance to God, Based on his word, based on his promises, based on his character, Paul says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. What do you mean? Parisia, boldly. Meaning to say, insist in coming. No hesitant, no second thought. Just come to the throne of grace. It is a throne of grace. It is not a throne of condemnation. So that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the help of need. Sad to say that we are reluctant to come to the throne of grace. It is the throne of grace. It is not the throne of condemnation or Judgment. The secret. According to Jude, verses 20 and 21. But you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith. Here is a qualification. Is your faith holy? Are we building our faith that it will become most holy faith. And we can only do that. Because he said, building up yourself in the most holy faith and praying in Holy Spirit. Keep in love with God. Keep yourselves in the love of God's love. And then wait for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ and bring you to eternal life. This is the assurance. The assurance that God Provided us that while we serve here on planet Earth, when we do His work, when we participate His mission, we need to believe, to claim, to live God's assurance to the fullness of Jesus Christ because that's what God wanting us to stay, that we may have an assurance. 
We should have an assurance while we are here. We should not allow ourselves to be really having a false assurance. We need to be secure. The surety of our assurance. Why? I'm a pastor, you know. But I'm so concerned about my own status. Because in the church we find either you are wise or foolish virgins. Either you are a faithful or unfaithful servant. Either you are walking in the narrow way or the broad way. Whether you are a tree that bears fruits or tree who has things that are not really bearing as a good tree. We have two kinds of faces, good and bad. Two kinds of builders, the wise and the other. So we need to... Jesus come, it means to say... Our surety is anchored in his word, anchored in his promises, anchored in his character. And there are external evidence of our own assurance because his word provided us. May what we discuss and share this time would help us. Let us serve the Lord with surety of our assurance. Let us serve with gladness and joy because without that joy and peace inside us, we are not assured. Whenever our life is over, we are assured. Many times I've heard many Christians. I don't know whether I will be saved or not. That statement should not be spoken because the devil will find all means to drag us to his side. Let us concentrate on coming to the Lord. Trust in his word. Believe, claim, and live according to what he says. Because when we have an assurance, it is joyful to serve the Lord. Our burdens are light because he's the one who carries. When we have all these things, because we're reconciled to God, we have a new birth, we have the abiding presence, we have the external evidence, then assurance is full. May the Lord bless us as we have the blessed assurance in His Word, in the person of Jesus Christ, in His finished work, in His character, and above all, when we call him as our Savior and God the Father, our Father, this is the foundation of our assurance.